intense, huh? Well, this is Forensic Science, and we are talking about blood today, and blood spatter, specifically. We spent some time talking about blood, blood typing, what's in your blood, and agglutination, how we use the antigens that are on your blood, mix antibodies with your blood to look for this agglutination to help us determine blood type. And so that was where we were last. That's where we last left off. That's the first half is just the basics of blood. And then we're going to look now as blood as evidence. Because, of course, as we saw in the video, um, our results had two people with uh, a positive blood. And so this isn't convicting evidence, of course. Luckily, if you have a blood sample, you will have DNA as a source. So we're going to focus more on how blood helps us with the reconstruction period and what blood can tell us. So that's the focus of today's lecture is to look at how the blood stain evidence itself helps in the recreation of the events. Okay, so <clears throat> first thing is we have to ask a few questions when we look at um, a crime scene and we look at blood. First thing is, and this seems obvious, is, is it blood? And is it human blood? Because there have been many times where, you know, I've, I've been out in the woods a lot and I see blood stains in the snow or in the, on the grass and stuff like that. And you got to remember, we have lots of hunters out there. And so when you see blood, sometimes maybe it's just not human blood, right? We have many mammals out there on our planet. And so first thing is we want to make sure that it is blood itself. And what species did it come from, right? Maybe it is... Uh, an animal abuse case and we do want to know if it's um, you know the, a, a dog or cat or some other animal that's been abused in question so those things do come up but most of it is we want to relate this back to an individual and we want to use it to reconstruct why are there blood stains on the ground anyways so we've had some tests to find blood because um, blood is hard to find in small amounts as well blood um, needs to be indicated these are the tests that will say whether or not it is blood right because um, blood contains hemoglobin which is that word that I love to say the iron containing protein and so these kind of tests when sprayed in the area would be able to say oh yes this is blood because we're detecting hemoglobin but of course certain vegetables contain iron um, this benzidine is a carcinogen so these babies went out the window luckily we discovered something called luminol I'm sure you've heard of this if you are a forensic science uh, TV watcher of any of those CSI type shows um, you've heard of luminol and how it is the best now it works um, great for many reasons. This is usually one of your test questions is why is luminol so great? Is because A, it produces light. That's very helpful. Um, it can detect blood diluted 300,000 times. So even if you think that you have bleached every surface and cleaned everywhere, you probably didn't get all the blood and luminol can detect that. Another thing that's very important is you can just spray it over large areas without a concern of hitting the one sample of blood with another chemical and then damaging the DNA. And so luminol doesn't damage that DNA. So you can just spray it all over and then just find the blood because it gives off um, UV light. So luminol is the best. The only downfall of luminol is its shelf life is like a couple months so i never usually order it because by the time i order it it comes in and then it's time to use it it's already expired so um that's really the only downfall of luminol is its limited shelf life okay on to the happy stuff blood stain patterns 
um, and how the appearance can be used to reconstruct, like I've been saying. All right, this is the most important page of this lecture because these are really the big four points that I want you to take away from this um, from this uh, section. Okay, these four things. What I'm going to do is, as you can see, I've got all these materials in front of me. I'll break this up into two videos. I'll take the time to explain this in, in detail right now. I'll cut the video and then come back and I'll walk you through this again with my good old fake blood and these cool calipers and some things like that. We'll take some quick measurements. We'll do like a demonstration for you. So let me explain this real quick and then we'll cut the video and, and get to see all this stuff happen. All right, first one, this one's probably pretty obvious where the surface that the blood hits makes a difference on what the spatter will look like, right? So for example, harder substances, right? They will um, leave less spatter. You gotta remember, most of blood is water, right? and water is attracted to itself. So when blood usually hits a hard object, it will just kind of join back up to itself and leave less of a spatter mark. It will leave what are called satellite drops that look like little satellites surrounding the outside of the main planet that is this blood stain. Uh, and of course, the more porous the surface is, Right, I've got some clothing here, which I'll use for my example. Right, the more porous something is, usually the larger the spatter that you will result in. Okay, blood stain travel. Um, this may seem different than what you think, but right when you imagine a drop of water, right, you imagine a teardrop or a drop, right, being shaped like this, right? Where it's skinny at the top and it's rounded at the bottom. And that's what you think of as a drop hits the ground. But the opposite is true when you are looking at a drop of blood or a stain that has hit the surface. It's actually traveling in the other direction, right? A drop of blood that falls like this will leave a stain like this. Okay, and so <clears throat> um, I'll show you how this all works um, when we get to it. Next thing is, of course, when blood drops from a straight 90 degree angle, it's going to leave a much more circular stain than if the blood um, spatter is coming from an angle it will lead different things, right? And this is a helpful piece of information where somebody is standing still and they've been shot and they leave a spatter mark as opposed to if you see circular drops, that means that somebody is, you know, bleeding and dripping blood. And so this is a very important um, <clears throat> piece of information to know as well. So knowing that the circular shape as opposed to a teardrop shape will show you that there was some type of angle of movement of that blood. And then of course, the origin of the blood spatter. This is how we can use the um, convergent lines when we have multiple dots um, and we can use those lines and connect them together to figure out the origin of the spatter. And so I'll show you all of that, right? So, like I said, <coughs> normally when you think of a tear drop or a drop of water, right, it's moving in this direction in the air, but when it leaves its stain, it's really been going in that direction, right? Because when it hits, it hits the object and then it leaves a little bit left over. Sometimes it's separate, sometimes it's all one piece. Right, these A, B, and C represent blood stains that have been dropped from a 90 degree angle. 
depending on what kind of surface they hit, they will leave different kinds of spatter. Of course, right, these are what are called satellite droplets, which have, you know, characteristics of the satellites around our planet, for example. Um, and so that's what, what those are. Um, we can even use um, simple geometry, and I'll show you a couple math problems as well on how to figure out what the angle of the movement of the blood stain was. Because if we can do that, then we can start to figure out where was this person standing when they got shot or hit to cause the blood to come out. Or um, where was the victim lying down when they were, you know, bleeding out and then they got up and which way did they walk, you know, things like that. All of these things help in the reconstruction. Um, the last one, right, was showing that when you have lots of spatter in a spray, you can look at those oval shapes. You can figure that they all draw a line back to the point of origin. And this can also be helpful in telling you where the person was standing when they were shot in case the body has been moved or the body is gone, you know, or um, other things happened after, basically. Um, so this is how we can figure out where things happen. So that all of this information, to go back to this page, all of these four pieces really do help the scientists in recreating that scene. And so I'm going to uh, pause here and I will do a demonstration of all of these um, four things to help you to understand. Um, normally we do a full lab, but we don't. So I'll just do it as a nice little walkthrough activity. So this is Andrako Forensics signing off and um, we'll see you shortly.